uh, what the QA team does. Uh, for, for someone who just joins, it's about, uh, well, it's quite hard to, uh, for him to find, to find something to do and find the right people to talk to. Uh, I also think that the QA team is not in a very good uh, health. Uh, we tried to do a sprint in uh, February, 2000, uh, in February, last February, uh, but uh, not enough people were interested in uh, coming, so we decided to cancel it. Um, so that's probably something that we can discuss about how to make more people uh, interested in doing QA. There's also some QA happening outside the team, of course. Uh, so we have an IRC channel which is Debian QA. So just uh, you can just go there if you want to uh, hang around and discuss uh, discuss about QA. We have a mailing list. And uh, the first question that I'd like to discuss with the both is: uh, Should we be more organized as a team, or is what we currently do uh, enough? Maybe one thing that we could work on during the both is to uh, map QA activities and people in charge of the various uh, parts of QA, because that would really be helpful to know who is doing what. So what does the QA team do? Uh, it maintains uh, several uh, services uh, inside Debian infrastructure, like the uh, packages tracking system, uh, the DDPO, which the so packages tracking system is that page where, which is source package centric, where, where you know everything about a given source package. DDPO is a page that is maintainer centric, so you know, where you know everything about uh, uh, a given maintainer. Uh, UDD, uh, which gathers uh, data from all other services uh, in Debian to a central database, so you can uh, run interesting SQL queries. There are also some services built on top of UDD, uh, for example, to find uh, interesting uh, RC bugs. Uh, Mole, which is uh, similar to UDD but different, <laughs> using uh, uh, Berkeley DB instead of uh, PostgreSQL. Um, so Mole uses Ber Ber Berkeley DB and UDD uses uh, PostgreSQL. DHS, which is a service uh, that uh, watches for new upstream release and mails you when uh, it finds a new upstream, upstream release. And there's also many other tools uh, which are under usually, usually under the domain uh, qa.debian.org. So what the team also does is that it organizes and runs uh, archive wild checks and mass bug filings. So like uh, archive rebuilds, so rebuilding every package from source. Uh, there's uh, pew parts, uh, which is uh, so which tests uh, installation of packages and the very removal and very upgrade. And um, Lintian, which is a static analy analyzer about uh, Debian packages. And the third part of uh, the QA team work is to detect inactivity. So to find, uh, well, to take care of orphaned or neglected packages and to track uh, inactive maintainers, so maintainers that are missing in action. That's the name of the missing in action, is the name of the team inside the QA team that does this. So uh, one popular topic of uh, QA buffs at DebConf is orphan packages. Uh, I don't think there's much to discuss uh, about this uh, this year uh, because we implemented uh, a new process that was discussed like two years ago. Uh, so basically we remove um, orphan packages with a low popcorn and uh, which have been inactive for some time. So we, we do a manual review on, of uh, the package before deciding that it could be, it can be removed. But uh, for example, uh, packages that have a popcorn below 50 and orphaned, uh, that are orphaned and that haven't seen an upload for the last two years. Uh, so, well, so to avoid um, having users that just cannot install their favorite package anymore, the bugs that we, for the removal of the package mentions uh, snapshots.debian.org, so it's users can still find old versions of the package if they really need it. So the situation about orphan packages is getting better because in 2009 we had 568 uh, orphan packages in the archive, and now we only have 415 orphan packages. So that's progress. Uh, the goal is not to get to zero because uh, it's normal that there are some orphan packages, but um, the older ones uh, are getting removed. So that's a web page. Let's check if my network works. It might.
or not. Okay, let's say it doesn't work. <laughs> so there's a, there's a service based on UDDs, at least uh, interesting orphan packages uh, based uh, basically on those uh, criteria. Yes, it worked. Jeez. So it's just a huge table with a list of orphan packages. And for example, uh, at build, uh, was orphaned for uh, almost 2,000 days. Uh, it's currently uh, ITA, but you know, there's a number of bugs. Um, oh, popcorn is broken, apparently. I have to check that. Okay. Then with that, you can easily find packages that are good candidates for removal. We also have another process to orphan packages that are no longer maintained, but not yet orphaned. Uh, which happens sometimes, so that we can uh, give the package to someone who is interested in maintaining it. We just, which the process mainly consists in uh, the interested, interested maintainer going to the BN QA, saying, uh, oh, this, this package looks, orphan, looks uh, neglected, I'd like to adopt it. And someone from the team looking at the package, pinging the maintainer and uh, orphaning it for, for him. And usually it's enough and uh, People don't complain since they are already um, uh, away from Debian. So, well, during the discussion, uh, I'd like to talk about, well, to discuss QA goals uh, for Widzi. At least what, what we would like uh, Debian to achieve, and then uh, who is going to work on them. So we know if uh, it, this doesn't match that we have a problem. <laughs> Uh, and maybe uh, discuss team, uh, team organization uh, so to see what we can improve about the organization of the QA team. And I've prepared on Gobi a list of um, QA team, the QA team activities, and I'd like to put uh, names in front of the various items so we know who is doing what, because currently I don't even know who is doing uh, most of it. <laughs> okay, so wants to start. Should we start with that or should we start with uh, QA goals for Witsi? Okay, let's start with QA goals for Witsi, I decide. <laughs> so the first goal I found was no package uh, failing to build from source, which is <laughs> easy for me. Uh, can someone uh, help take notes on Gobi, maybe, so I don't have to, to write. Um, so, is someone interested in uh, doing something regarding QA for Widzi? Well, maybe you can just explain. Maybe you can just explain what, uh, what, what work it means because I have yeah. to processing okay. build logs, etc. <laughs> but uh, I'm not sure the process is clear for everyone and what what work it needs just to ensure mm. that no packages are failing to build. So uh, for that, uh, what what I do is that I just take uh, all source package in Debian. I rebuild them in a clean route, get the build log, and if the, if the log failed, I then file a bug uh, about the failed build. And so uh, Didier uh, proposed to help me. He already filed uh, <laughs> about uh, 50 bugs, I think, or 100 bugs about that. So we just need to continue the, <laughs> the good work about this. Let's hope. <laughs> so I can add your name there. <laughs> So your Debian login is Odix? Yeah. Okay. For Curiosity, when you are launching the rebuild, how many packages are failing? The percentage, do you have an idea? Uh, I can tell you. So, uh, So, for example, those are just during the last rebuild, uh, 755. So, uh, and we have currently a bit over uh, 16,000 uh, packages. Um, 
I talk, I chat with Didier about this, and he told me that you have a web interface to do so. Because uh, no, uh, I you just have, have a, a script. Scripts. Yeah. Okay. Because it it will be uh, maybe nice to have the access to it very easily and to see how it looks like to get people involved because. For me, it's magical. I just see bug reports coming from you on a day, on a yeah. weekly basis, but I don't know how you are managing that, and uh, it's kind of blurry for me. So I don't know if it is tricky or easy, and so on. So it's so well. Maybe I have some. Uh, yeah, I have some logs. So yeah, let's make a short, quick demo. So in, the, in this directory, I have all the uh, fed logs. So for example, I have a script uh, that. Uh, go through logs and just displays um, likely failure. For example, um, Abbey Ward is failing to build and the error message is that one. That's the, that's the script just uh, find while well, using uses various heuristics to find the likely error. So when it's about uh, build depends, it's really easy to pass. When it's about um, GCC errors, it's really easy to pass. When it's about uh, tech life, for example, it's really hard to pass. And then I have to copy paste manually. But then, for example, um, oh, wait, oh, wait. no, that won't work. Um, I'm trying to, well, oh, wait. Because all the bugs are, fi are filed, I think, in the last rebuild. Um. Oh, no, there are some that aren't filed. Okay, so let's file those. I won't send the mail because it's not really recent, but. So when I file, I need to set the date, so. So when I file bugs, I get, I have a script that just, just goes through every bug uh, matching a regex, so I can file all, um, all GCC errors at the same time. So I'm just filing the remaining bugs, if, and then it extracts um, better log, um, the interesting part of the log. For example, this package fails with that error. So it's a Java package, that's why I didn't file it. And my script can't extract the error message because Java is just uh, really annoying to pass. So in that case, I can either, so normally I get a list of um, bugs, uh, RC bugs already filed against the package. So I can just press, uh, so I get the list and I can just press two to say that uh, that's a bug number two in my list. And then the, um, my list of bugs get annotated with the bugs that are already filed, by for example, by someone else. Or I can report a new bug, and then I get a, a mut to open uh, with the bug mail. And so in that case, I would have to... Hmm? <laughs> I just have to find the right error message. Let's say it's that one, but it's not that one. Well, let's try to do it correctly. Uh, well, I could pa copy that one. Go there. Yeah. Oops. Okay, and then uh, send it. For having done that once, um, the problem I saw is that you have to do it fast because. Mm -hmm. The, as the archive is changing, you have to report the, re the reports within a week at most. Well, I, I would say within two days. For, okay, yeah. even. Yeah. So the problem is that one or two persons have to do this work manually to report bugs or semi-manually to report bugs within two days. And mm -hmm. we have, So if we are two, we have to process 700 b mm -hmm. build logs. So it's, it's much work. And I'm wondering if, uh, if the, the, the BTS is the good tool for this. Um, how much work would it be, for example, to just publish the logs and detecting failing or not and sending automated mails to maintainers saying, okay, at the last rebuild it has failed and go take a look or adding a section in the PTS something and this would avoid a lot of work for us 
uh, but it would transmit the same information, I think. Well, usually people don't like uh, automated emails. And, uh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, at some, well, it, it happens that um, I just sent a DD list of uh, packages failing to Debian Devil. I did it uh, sometimes, but the response is quite low, actually. Most people don't fix their package when you just do that. And also, it's important to file the bug so that uh, it gets blocked uh, when migrating to testing and uh, you know about it. And, uh, well. From the 750 logs, how many of them are already filed bugs? Uh, not that much. Um, I don't have a way to know, but uh, um, I think that currently I'm I'm almost the only one doing uh, archive rebuilds, even uh, partial. Uh, at some point, uh, Daniel Schlepper was fi filing uh, quite a lot of them, but uh, I don't think he has been uh, doing it recently. And from rebuild to rebuild? So how many new bugs appear? Well, it depends on the time between rebuilds. When I'm not too busy, I try to rebuild uh, every two weeks because uh, it's important to um, uh, avoid getting in, uh, too many big transitions, too many big changes uh, between two rebuilds, so you know that uh, uh, what changes basically between the two rebuilds. And when you have a rebuild, uh, when, you, when you wait one or two months, then you get several things changes and you can't say, oh, it's likely to be a GCC 4.6 problem, because that's the thing that changed since my last rebuild. So oh, I also have the my scripts also work with um, uh, something I, I wrote which is similar to pure parts. So you, I can do uh, installation testing. It's not really ready for, well, it could be uh, a pure parts replacement, but uh, well. Olga is not here. Yeah. So help is really welcomed on that, but uh, that's not the only thing your QA team does. Okay, so one of my, could you go back to Gobi? Yeah. Uh, one of my personal goal is to have a streamlined upgrade for default desktop installs, which means like if, if people have installed uh, default desktop for Squeeze, then just upgrades to Wizzy should like be trivial to do and also work out the bugs. Uh, we didn't have that for Squeeze. We have a few bugs that I'm still trying to fix in stable, which plagues, plagued a few uh, uh, users and I think it, it makes us look really bad for desktop users. There's no way to test that automatically, I guess. It's no, I think it's like, really but it's, it's QA, so yeah. because it involves the whole desktop mm. and, and all environment mm. stuff. Mm. So, yeah. So well, no, it, for example, like Wonderbug, who is still in uh, squeeze uh, and not fixed is that if you had upgraded uh, um, from Lenny with a sudo based installation, then uh, once you have upgraded in squeeze, there is no single tool, uh, graphical administration tool that works because there is a problem in systems tools backends. Uh, there's no way you can test that automatically. It's like user, you, you have, I mean, we, now that uh, the release team has set it for, for freeze dates, uh, it's fairly easy to, from that day, try to do upgrades and see if the resulting system works or not. Uh, yeah. Something else? So I, I could add my own uh, wish list, but uh, things that I won't work on, but uh, <laughs> um. so that's probably uh, Olga. But it, it wasn't. Uh, it, it was far from being uh, fully covered for for squeeze, and probably it needs uh, uh, some help. What? 
So I have I have my own script for that, but I, it's not uh, as polished as the rebuilt one, so it's uh, it needs more more manual work. But uh, if uh, Didier wants to do that as well, uh, <laughs> my goal is really to um, uh, stop doing the log analysis myself. I'd like to. Uh, I will continue to do it if uh, nobody uh, steps uh, steps up. But uh, I'd like to get rid of that. Uh, when I've, I've been doing it, doing it since uh, 2007, so I'm a bit tired of that. <laughs> I was thinking in some automatic process to to detect how awful the recommends part for a package is because. Sometimes I, I found packages that pulled a lot of stuff from recommends that they don't to pull. Mm. But I, the thing that I do is I just report manually. Mm. But I think it's hard to, to, to write something to figure out if the recommends are too excessive for, for a package. Mm. Yeah, we could try to to detect packages that have uh, well strange behavior, well lots of packages installed via recommends, but there are some that have good reasons to do that, like uh, dev scripts. Well, I'm not sure if it's a good reason, but uh, dev scripts in installs like uh, 200 megs of uh, recommends uh, when you install it. Well, so yeah. Something else? So, well, if nobody else has ideas about that, we can try to fill this. So we'll have a clean documentation of who is doing what in the QA team, which will be, which will be probably a bit depressing, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> who maintains the PTS? Okay. Uh, I never remember if, if your login is R Herzog or just Herzog. So DDPO, that's me. I don't know if it's Attila or not. Mole. Mole is a work of uh, Jeroen van Wolfler. He is away from Debian since quite a few years now. Well, he, he's not, he has not left, but he's uh, mm. not active anymore. And, uh, well, not many people know it. Uh, it's not quite like UDD. It's much more a uh, sort of uh, way to organize mm. uh, archive-wide either checks or uh, data extraction or stuff like that. Yeah, there are two parts uh, in MOL. There's uh, data storage stuff that is based on Berkeley DB and the tags as a database. That, that, that had actually in the start the same goal uh, as UDD. Well, UDD came later, so UDD has the same goals as MOL. Uh, <laughs> it was to gather all the data about Debian in a single place. And there's a sort of scheduler that can, uh, that, that eases that easy the way, easy running uh, archive-wide uh, stuff. Exactly, the, the, there are basic database which, well, DB, like, like you say, uh, hmm. Berkeley DB, so uh, with keys representing all the source packages, and uh, you can easily schedule a task to be done on each source packages, and every time there's a new source package that appears, uh, it will automatically schedule the work. Uh, I used that at one point for the symbol stuff extraction, but since nobody wanted to take it over, it's now gone. <laughs> uh, but you can use it for similar stuff, and uh, it's useful. UDD is much more to find statistics, and I would think, say that the main point of MOL is really uh, the scheduler side for organizing some archive-wide uh, checks or data extraction. Maybe it can be useful for... Uh, other uh, topics, I know uh, we will probably discuss this in the Lintian buff uh, because uh, people are interested in doing archive-wide checks and automatically uh, extracting source packages and maybe 
the stuff to consolidate with Lintian here, but we'll see. So, well, the next item is DHS. So, hmm? Well, there are two versions now of the HGS. There's the alias one, uh, which is not really, which used to be maintained by Raphael uh, Jeter, and uh, there's the QA one, which he, which has been written by Mayon also. So Mayon for now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so the the first version uh, was only maintained by Raphael. It disappeared for a few months, and then uh, someone had to rewrite it, which is a bit, uh, well, lots of time lost, but lost, but well. Uh, so what are the other services that we maintain? <laughs> well, there's not much on the website, but uh, I think I, I probably one of the last to the, who did a commit, at least I know how to commit something. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, we could migrate it to Wiki Debian org. And There's not much on the website, but it could be useful to have uh, more statistics on it, uh, probably generated with uh, UDD. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that when I started the uh, work on QA, uh, I was keen on looking at packages with most bugs, with mm -hmm. the biggest number of bugs. And I don't think we have any official place for that kind of statistics. Mm. So uh, usually you get a response or, oh, it's this U UDD query, uh, go uh, <laughs> I was about to say that. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and do it yourself. But uh, it's not really the best answer we can give to someone who just mm. wants to look at the bugs. Well, but is it really useful to just send people to packages with the most bugs? Because I'm not sure that... Uh, well, prob it's probably not a good idea to send them over there, but uh, people are looking for it, so mm. it's so mm. those who want, I don't see why we, we could mm. not provide it in a yeah. practical way. So mm. maybe that's something we can add mm. to the website. Mm. Well, it's easier to add uh, as a CGI in UDD. <laughs> if we want to add other goals without maintaining people do, doing them. <laughs> uh, I would like uh, some way to ensure that all packages are maintained and not only uh, uh, in a corrective way because we detect problems, but in a proactive way. So mm. uh, ensuring that people are still still uh, active. Mm. I don't know if it takes a, I don't know the precise means, mm. if it's a mm. ping every year or anything mm. else, but uh, it's something I'd like us to investigate. Do you do you mean that by package or by persons? Well, a combination of both, <laughs> because uh, we we have uh, all the cases. Uh, I mean, uh, there are packages with active maintainers, but the maintainer doesn't care anymore about this package, but did not take care to refine it, and uh, we have maintainers who disappeared completely. So, sorry. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, one of those limit. Uh, she is asking, uh, what about teams? Because many packages are maintained by teams. So how do we deal with teams? And effectively, effectively, it's one of the problem. Uh, sometimes we have teams, but no people behind teams. So that way it would be. Uh, we we should have a way to for maintainers to say, okay, I'm taking the responsibility for this package. This is usually already done via uploaders, but you don't have any, yeah, it's, you, sometimes you, g you add yourself to uploaders just because you want to upload and uh, not generate a warning or stuff like that. Nowadays, it's not any longer needed because you can uh, put team upload in the changelog and it won't generate the warning. So I tend to not put myself in, uploaders of package that I don't plan to maintain on a regular basis, and I encourage everybody to do the same. But actually, uh, we have many packages where uploaders is not really significant, but the goal would be to ping those people and 
ask them to define their role? Do they consider themselves as the, as a responsible or only as a backup or or did they even forget that they were in, the, in these uploaders and they want absolutely no responsibility and so on? I know it's a difficult topic, but it's something I'd like to investigate. Well, if I have to do it myself, I don't know when it will be, probably mm. in a few years when DPKG has no bugs anymore. But, <laughs> 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 but uh, well, it's something uh, interesting for everybody. And it's not difficult, it's mo more of a social problem than a technical one. But uh, so, I mean, uh, you don't need much experience in even to be able to work on this idea. Just need some time and discuss with people. Yeah, yes, I think it's a problem that I've seen also that, for example, I reported a bug against the XP, XPRA package and then the BTS says that it's maintained by the Python applications packaging team. And then I'm like, who should I talk to? There's a new upstream version. I'd like to ask ab about some questions, and BTS is not very good for asking casual questions. So something uh, where the maintainer could say that I'm, I'm interested in the fate of this package, but others in this team can also help would, would be useful. I don't know how to do it, but it's a good point. Right now, currently, uh, if I were you, I would look at the last person who uploaded the package. It's uh, the it's, uh, best way, but uh, I agree. We it would be good to have a more structured information. You asked about PAPT. Um, the way that's generally handled in PAPT is if PAPT is in the maintainer field, then any PAPT member is welcome to touch the package. And if PAPT is only in uploaders, then preferably the uploader should be asked. But if you come into hash Debian Python and ask around, um, chances are someone will tell you. Well, yeah, that that's, that, that's the particular one. Yeah. Um, I think also about the uh, about the goals for Wizzing. We need some system of reporting crappy maintainers. Like in a way that uh, when a lot of people report a package like no well maintainer, uh, sending an email to the maintainer to tell him that this number of people thinks he's not doing a good job. I will like it that it's your idea. <laughs> 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 Crappy. <laughs> I don't know, it's something that um, right now, um, sometimes somebody tells somebody else that he's not doing a good job, but usually when only one person tells, it uh, doesn't work out very well. And I think this, there is a system like, I don't know, four people have reported that in the last year that you are not doing a good job with this package. And it allows some system of inserting because you did this or you did this. It might help to some people not adopting some packages. I don't know. It might not work out. But mm. It's something to consider. Well, if you're interested in working on it. Uh. Uh, I work on it in the sense that uh, personally when I think somebody is doing something not well, I mail this person. <laughs> but usually a single email doesn't help. I mean, I'm truly unsure if I actually shame, because you know that's that kind of reporting that you've suggested suggesting is like a shaming people, and I'm not sure that. Yeah, but even privately, I mean, if I get a, a message like saying, "Hey, five people hate you," then I'm not going to <laughs> to you know to feel any better and to feel uh, in in like doing more work actually or getting back to it, or I don't, because uh, sometimes it's just a matter of like. E e your life just, you know, uh, gets back at you and you're not active for a few months. And then it's hard to get back to do actual work. 
and I would rather have, have ways that would actually uh, make it easier for people to get back to work or to um, accept others doing work than actually shaming them. Uh, because I think that's, uh, given the volunteer nature of Debian, it's, it's, it will be uh, probably a more effective mechanism. But I mean, it's like I've ha I had to, uh, to, to hijack a package uh, in, in the rest, like in, in the last uh, few months, and I mean, at some point I was really fed up with, with the package being old and unmaintained and having missed squeeze, and so I just, you know, I, I asked on Debian Devol and I had positive answer, like people told me, hey, good, do that, please hijack that package. I, I got three emails doing that, and I was happy that, that uh, people would tell me so, and I just I hijacked the package and it went fine. I mean, what's strange that like, I never got any answer from that particular maintainer. Never, ever. Like, even after the hijack, I was like, what? Uh, I don't see that like uh, telling people, there, there is five people who hate you. Uh, sometimes people think they, they try to maintain a package and they are, they are already conscious that they don't giving the package all the time they need, but until somebody doesn't tell them that, mm, like some pushing that, maybe the package is better to be orphaned and somebody else takes over, people don't realize, because they think that if they orphan the package, nobody's going to maintain it. I don't know, and right now when, there is, I mean, I am, I am talking about packages. Some, some people can be doing an awesome job with a set of packages and doing crap in a feed package. Doesn't mean that the person is, doing crap all the time, just in certain packages. We don't have a way of handling this as a project. I don't think this is going to be the last solution, but I don't know. I think it will be an interesting experiment. In my case, when I think somebody is not doing a good job, I try to send a nice email. Usually the email gets ignored, or the answer is, if I orphan the package, nobody else is going to maintain it and it's going to disappear from the VM. That maybe will be better. That's my point. So we have five minutes remaining, so I think it's, we could change topic. I think it's interesting, but... Uh, yeah. um, as far as I know, the, the orphaned packages are maintained by the QA team. That is not defined. Um, well, that's not and, really true as well. <laughs> and in the end, we want to to remove those packages. But I am certain that among those packages, there are some that we cannot uh, uh, afford to remove. Mm -hmm. And for which some people will sometimes do an upload just to make sure it still works, but still under the QA team umbrella. Mm -hmm. So maybe one work that we should do is go through the list of packages that are orphaned and, and send well-written mails to Dev and Devil or somewhere just to, to, to build new teams around this because it's not sustainable to keep them in the QA team. And because the, ma the, the packages that are orphaned are deemed to either be adopted or removed. And we cannot have packages that cannot either be adopted or removed and mm. that end up maintained by the QA team that's not sustainable. Mm. Mm. So maybe um, pointing the packages that need special treatment and for which we need to, f to build a team around could be a good thing to do for Weezy, mm. I think. Well, and I could help. Okay, just do it. <laughs> no, I, f I think it's a great idea. The main problem is that it takes time, and uh, with 400 packages, everything takes a lot of time. So, well, just start with the list. And <laughs> yeah, it's true that uh, if you look at maintainers that go away and send a summary mail to the developer, okay, here's my package. I have uh, this one needs this kind of care and. Uh, it uses this language, is it easy to maintain, blah, blah, blah. And uh, uh, those packages tend to get adopted relatively quickly. Those who just file their orphan bug and do not mail anybody uh, will linger for months. Even if they show up in the automated listing, uh, people do not look at those. Or some people do, but uh, uh, n usually not those who are already busy with other packages. Only really new maintainers who have read the documentation said, mm. oh, I should find a package if I want to enter Debian. So <laughs> mm. uh, I, last year, I think, I, uh, oh no, two years ago, I suggested to go even further. Uh, 
not only mailing daemon devil, but maybe uh, upstream uh, lists to say, oh, we used to have this package, it's mm -hmm. orphaned, and maybe someone in your community would like to join daemon and take it over. But again, that's uh, more work. So, so, next topic. Right. Someone edited the uh, Gobi page. So, DDPO by mail uh, is, a, is a service that uh, used to send uh, emails to uh, developers about the issues in their packages, like a list of uh, current open RC bugs, uh, current testing migration problems, and stuff like that. Uh, so, I used to run that, and I've stopped by lack of, because of lack of time, basically. Um, I think it's quite useful to have such a mail about uh, once a month remind you about uh, all the pending uh, issues in your package. Uh, if someone wants to take over that, uh, the scripts probably still work or quite work. Uh, just need someone to take it. Okay. Because you need to review the mails before sending uh, 500 mails. Well, you need to review some of them to make sure that everything went fine while uh, generating them. I didn't review all of them, but uh, I picked like 10 and looked at uh, but everything looked fine. So you want to take it? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so Dakar, uh, that's uh, Debian automated uh, code analysis, I think. Uh, so I think it's maintained by Raphael, but uh, <laughs> so we can write. Uh, so the problem with Raphael is that uh, he's very busy. So often he's active for two months and then inactive for two months. So. I don't want to talk for him, but I think Zach is going to work also on this okay. with adding some stuff. But uh, don't put it on. Yeah, maybe, and maybe I will help him mm. and some time with that. Okay. But uh, I, didn't I didn't think it moved during since he launched it. For mm. now we have three tools which are launched. One tool to check bashism and the one to is CPP check and how hash O count. And in the future we might uh, add new tools to this one. Mm. But I don't know if, okay. if he's planning to do that, Raphael. Okay. Someone added PET. So PET is not maintained by the QA team. So PET is uh, uh, that page that lists the status of, um, of a team by looking at its Git or SVN repository. That's very useful. But it's maintained outside the QA team. And I don't know why it could be. Uh, I don't know if Ansgar is here. No. But uh, so just push him so that he maintains it into in, inside Debian infrastructure. I already tried uh, a bit. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's, it's a kind of tool that should be inside Debian infrastructure and not uh, outside. The, the code is on Alios, so at least it's not too bad, but still. What about the um, mission in action team? So it's uh, so mission in action, I don't know, I don't know who is doing uh, MIA. Well, most, most, most of the work was doing by JHR, I don't remember his name. And <laughs> now I'm doing almost responding to most of the emails since one or two years ago, one year ago or something like that. And I believe that we need more people there because uh, sometimes it's pretty hard to keep track to the people who is being reported. Yeah. And maybe I was thinking about asking to DSAs to create a, a, an a, spe a specific uh, RT or something so we can work better because the infrastructure that MIA teams does have right now is pretty hard to, to manipulate so it's, it's, it's awful if you're a newcomer to, to go to join the, the MIA team so and, and as well yes and as, you are working as well so, so. Hmm? So, Renee is are you doing that Oh, okay. You, you are not doing uh, MIA work, or you are doing? Okay.
The okay. problem right now with the MIA infrastructure is exactly what he said, that um, uh, we don't track it properly. Sometimes maintainers are ping, they answer to the person who ping, this person never forwards the email. I mean, the system doesn't really help a lot. So you can add in the goals or in the things to do that somebody needs to, to redo the MIA infrastructure. And I just to uh, just to say something, I, I, right now RT is being is being not public anymore by the DS18, so I believe that it could be a great idea to create a queen RT, so we can start to move some info there. Um, just about the public thing, it's actually public to all Debian developers. There's yeah. a password on master. But MIA information is, is available for all Debian developers as well, so. So I have a question for those of you who are not involved in QA. Um, why did you come and do you want to get involved in uh, the QA team? So, or did you just Get it, go to the wrong room and <laughs> expect it to be. <laughs> I mean, I, I want to get involved, but not like take much responsibilities. Yeah. I like I like to have is a way that I could like work in batch, like between like if my uh, current work. Uh, level like pad work or whatever is low then I can I don't know spend two hours or three hours like you know fix, fixing filling bug or fixing bugs or whatever but it's it's way more easier to do that such thing when people invite you to do so like hey let's have like uh, uh, um, let's schedule a, a bug fixing party at, at that time and we meet on IRC and just go on I don't know that's something might help but I'm not going to uh, schedule such meeting per se yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's true that the main problem I think that we have in the QA team is that uh, new people uh, need to take over uh, maintenance of uh, all parts of the team. It's, there's not much to do if you just want to help for one or two hours. And in the Debian Games team, we started having monthly ISA meetings, and that's mm -hmm. kind of increased the amount of activity in the team. So maybe that mm -hmm. could be applied to the QA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we could try that, yeah. Do you want to organize them? Okay, right. <laughs> I guess regarding the question, why did you come here? There's people in the IRC saying uh, he's from Argentina and wants to, and he also wants to join Lisandro. And it's pretty much the same for me. I just curiosity and hmm. thinking if what could I help. So I think we are out of time now. Yeah. So uh, just a few questions. Uh, who is interested in doing a UDD both later this week? Because we could either run it officially or unofficially. And OK, so it seems unofficially is fine. Um, are some people interested in doing an archive rebuild and ar archive testing both? Why would uh, uh, demo the scripts uh, to get you involved? And Okay, so, okay, oh, quite a lot, okay. So we'll try to schedule something. Uh, something else? Okay, thank you for coming. <laughs>